So guys, after many hours of downtime, we have finally been thrust into chapter five, season two. With this new season comes a bunch of new updates to the map and also two new biomes, which is going to be the underworld and then the Olympus type of biome. In today's video, I wanna go over my five best solo drop spots for you guys in this brand new season. And before this video starts, I just wanna preface by saying, guys, in this video, I'm going over drop spots that are part of the new biome. That's not to say that there aren't many good solo drop spots in the old biome from last season. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, please check out my drop spots video from last season if you guys are interested in having a bunch of more options. With that out of the way, let's hop right into it. So guys, I'm just going to be basically going over the basic features of the drop spot, basically how many chests they have and then how to play it. If you guys have watched my previous drop spot videos in seasons past, you may know that I do go over individual aspects of drop spots like slurp barrels, different attributes of rotation. Today's video, I'm really not going to do that because all that stuff you guys can easily find on the website fortnite.gg. I'm just going to be going over the different chests that they have, the amounts, and then I'm gonna be going over exactly how you guys should win and play at this drop spot. Now that being said, let's hop right into the actual drop spots. To begin guys, the first location that I wanna go over is known as Sharon's Crossing. Sharon's Crossing is really good because it has five chests, however, and it's in a really optimal location if you guys are looking to have many different loot routes. It's gonna be located in the Underworld biome. It is actually fairly close to POIs like Grimgate and the Underworld. In my opinion, Sharon's Crossing is really good because it's very low key in comparison to the massive POIs that it's next to. Obviously having five chests, it does have a good base amount of loot. However, a really good thing that you guys can actually do in order to actually win this POI if you guys don't know, the water in this season in the underworld does allow you to kind of split step. You can double tap your jump button and you can actually go flying forward in kind of a glitch motion. Now, what I recommend you guys do is you land at Sharon's Crossing, you get all the chests that are there, and then you use this different water aspect. You use it to go loot other places with chests, to go farm materials, maybe to go W key, depending on the game that you're in. Basically, all I'm trying to say is that the reason this POI is so good is because it does have a small, good base amount of loot, but it also has really good accessibility to this water feature that allows you to rotate and move around really easily. I think that's an extremely underrated aspect of a POI, the ability to actually rotate out of it using natural features. And I think that this POI is an absolute perfect one for those of you that are trying to land somewhere low key, but also have a place that you can easily leave out of if you need to. Let's get into the next drop spot, which is going to be Summit Temple. Now, Summit Temple is going to be having eight chests. This is located in the sort of mythological Mount Olympus biome that's in the bottom right side of the map. I'm actually a really big fan of this biome because I think that it has plenty of natural materials, guys. It's really easy to farm. And I think Summit Temple is a really good spot. It's located in a really good area on the edge of two biomes. It's on the edge of the Mount Olympus biome and the snow biome. Now, guys, obviously this place does have eight chests, so it's a little bit of a step up from Sharon's Crossing. And yes, even though it doesn't have direct access to the water that allows you to kind of split step through the air. It does have really good access to many different areas you guys can rotate to. This means that you guys can land at the summit temple and then you can rotate up to the summit base camp, get some loot from there, or vice versa. You guys could land at the summit base camp and then rotate down to summit temple and then fight the people that are landing there. Also, this POI is fairly central. It's not gonna be too much in the corners of the map. It is on the edge, don't get me wrong. However, I think it's still not that hard to rotate out of here, especially if you get a basic mobility item. For summit temple, guys, I'd recommend you kind of try to perfect your drop spot because there are very few chests in the actual buildings here what i'd recommend you guys do is try to land for the main building and try to rotate over to one of the sides there's going to be three primary buildings either i'd recommend you land the main building and then alpha up one of the sides or you land one of the side buildings and then alpha up the main building in that situation, I think it'll actually really help you guys out in terms of actually winning this POI. And overall, that's how I think you should actually play Summit Temple if you guys are trying to land there in solos. Once again, like I said before, a really good play is landing at the Summit Base Camp, getting all the loot and the slurp barrels there, and then rotating down. However, that's going to be kind of your battle to choose depending on your drop and the drops of the people around you. Either way of playing this POI is fine. I just generally think that if you create a game plan, you should stick to it with this POI. But that's going to be Summit Temple, and I think it's a really solid low-key drop spot with a little bit more loot than the previous one. Now the next drop spot guys is going to be known as Cliffside Lodge. This is going to be also located in this Mount Olympus biome. Cliffside Lodge does have the same amount of chests as the previous one, it has eight chests. And yes, it is a little bit more south. It is a little bit more in the corner of the map. So rotation here might actually be a little bit tougher for some of you. However, since you have access to stuff like water and different ability to rotate around the map using vehicles, whatever else it may be, I think that is not actually the worst POI that you could get in. It's also very close to other major POIs like Brawler's Battleground and Mount Olympus itself. So I think that if you guys are looking to land somewhere where you can then W key major POIs, this is a really good spot for that. 
Now guys, Cliffside Lodge is going to be having a couple more people because it may be considered as a backup spot for people who mess up their drops to Mount Olympus or Brawler's Battleground. So at a certain point, I think that it's really smart for you guys to actually try and land here, loot extremely quickly, and then rotate out if possible. Because then what you guys can do is one of three things. You guys can either go and get eliminations at POIs nearby, you can rotate over to the dead side and get a really good passive position, or you guys can rotate directly to the center of map and kind of play a hybrid play style where you try to get W key eliminations if you can, and also try to play passive in certain situations where that's a applicable. To win this POI guys, I'd always recommend you try to land on the top of the house and then work from the top down. I want you guys to get as much loot as possible and the majority of the chests in this house are located in the top to mid section. If you guys are able to get those chests guys, I think you will eventually win those fights. There is going to be some slur barrels and noms boxes and different things that you guys can use in this POI so in order to get up on shield really quickly. But overall Cliffside Lodge, that's how I'd play it if I were you guys. Now guys, the next POI is going to be a drastic step up in the amount of chests that are actually there. This is going to be Research Rock. Research Rock is once again located in the Mount Olympus biome over to the bottom right side. This is going to be a little bit further from Brawler's Battleground and Mount Olympus. It's going to be in the literal corner of the map, but it's going to be having 22 incredible amounts of chests. Now what that does for you guys is that it provides an absolute insane amount of loot for such a small place. And it also is a really good spot if you guys are trying to farm metal. There's metal everywhere in this POI. So if you guys are looking to farm metal, this is definitely the spot for you. Generally, what I'd recommend if you are landing at Research Rock, guys, you're not going to be too contested. Once again, it could be considered as a backup spot for other major POIs. But Research Rock, in my opinion, guys, is one of the best POIs if you're looking for metal and also one of the best POIs if you're looking for quick and large amounts of loot. There's going to be stuff like vending machines. There's going to be rotation options like a launch pad up on the hill. However, I think the real benefit of this is the amount of loot you're able to get and the ability to play passive, honestly. If you're landing at Research Rock, guys, you can go in W key because you are close to major POIs. However, I'd really recommend that you guys try to play passive out of here because you have a launch pad in order to rotate with. You have the ability to use the ocean, maybe to get dead side if you guys need. And honestly, if you want to win off spawn here, you just truthfully need to get the best drop and learn how to play in the POI, the geometry of it, learn the different peaks, the different doors, the different places people can be hiding. All that stuff's really important for Research Rock. This is kind of going to be the really good underrated POI that a lot of people aren't landing at. Yes, it is a little bit far from the center of the map, but honestly, with the amount of mobility in the map today and the launch pad that's here, rotation isn't too bad from here. And guys, my final POI, you guys know how I like to close it off, pretty much always with a named location. This is going to be in the Underworld once again. This is going to be known as Grim Gate. Now, the Underworld POI is absolutely massive. However, what I like to think of Grim Gate as is a smaller, more concentrated version of the Underworld POI. Grim Gate's going to be having a whopping 36 chests, which is a wild number if you guys think about it because it's such a small, actual name POI. I think that the best part about Grim Gate is that it's really close to the center of map, so rotation is really not that hard. It has tons of natural resources like brick. You have obviously access to the river that gives you the split step. You have a bunch of different options for rotation. But also, when you guys are landing here, there's going to be plenty of slurp barrels and slap barrels, which allows you to save a lot of shield. This doesn't only make it a good draft for solos, but other game modes as well. Genuinely, I think that Grim Gate is actually the best POI in the Underworld, simply because it's not as congested as the actual named Underworld POI. More people are going to be landing there because that's where Hades is. That's where you guys can get all the different options to actually rotate. You guys will have access to the Mythics there. Grim Gate is kind of more a low-key place you guys can land, but it is still named, so it may be a little bit contested. You guys do need to know how to win off spawn. My recommendation to win off spawn guys would be to go for one of the god chests. Those are going to be the chests that look a little bit different. They're shining, they're making a different noise, and they're going to be dropping you really good loot. You guys might actually get the mythic Zeus lightning bolt and the wings as well. If you guys are able to get that, I think you're definitely going to succeed in landing and winning at this POI. So overall, Grimgate is the best named POI for solos in the season in my opinion. Guys, that is the video on the top five best solo drop spots. I hope you guys enjoyed this new format of me kind of just saying the chess and then going over how to win the POI and how to play it. Once again, guys, please check out my last season drop spot video if you guys are interested in other drop spots that are really applicable to a lot of you guys in this season. But that is about it for this video, guys. Be sure to like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.